Sebaceous filaments versus blackheads. It's important that you know the difference when it comes to your own skincare, and this is a topic that many people are confused about because I get questions all of the time, both in the clinic from my patients and from people online. Today in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what are sebaceous filaments, what are blackheads, how can you know the difference, and then make some specific recommendations of products that you can treat them with. Welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Dustin. I'm a board-certified dermatologist, and the reason that I make videos and educate online is all about supporting my mobile clinic where I go out and provide free dermatology care to underserved populations. So thank you for watching this video. I'd love it if you hit that like button or left a comment down in the comment section. I'd love to know your questions as we go through this important topic. The first thing that we're going to dive into are sebaceous filaments. Sebaceous filaments are essentially a normal part of your skin. Now both blackheads and sebaceous filaments tend to appear in areas of the body that we call the sebaceous areas. Sebaceous is is just where your oil glands are predominant, your sebaceous type oil glands, essentially kind of like a modified sweat gland. So these are gonna be most prominent on the head and neck, the upper chest and the upper back. And this is the area that we'll see both blackheads and sebaceous filaments forming. It's important to understand why you have pores in this area. They do several different things. We have pores all over our body. We have oil glands all over our body, but we have much more in these areas. And the sebaceous filament is just the normal accumulation of oil and dead skin cells inside a completely normal pore. And we have tons of these on the nose, on the cheeks, on the chin, and these are the areas people complain about sebaceous filaments the most. The sebaceous filament is just an accumulation of that oil and dead skin cells, and part of that is to work as a transit system to help move sebum, or the natural oil from your skin, up onto the skin surface. And one of the important functions that this has is to help moisturize our skin. Our skin does not like to be dry. When we get dry, we tend to be itchy or irritated, and our skin can crack and we get more prone to infections. Another thing that many people don't understand about the normal function of your sebum is it has little chemicals in there that help to kill and fight off pathogenic bacteria or bacteria that could be a problem if it got inside the skin. So when you have normal oil production, you're less likely to get infections on the skin and your skin is less likely to be dry and irritated. A normal sebaceous filament is gonna be a small yellowish or skin colored and sometimes just a little gray dot on the skin inside a pore. If you are to extract them using a pore strip or something like that, they're just gonna look like a little waxy strand, but they tend to be very thin and not super wide and they don't get super dark. Now you may have noticed if you try to extract them with a pore strip, within even just a few days, they're gonna start to return because your oil glands are gonna continue to produce oil and that will accumulate in your pore and work its way up towards the surface. So I strongly recommend that people don't always try to remove every sebaceous filament. Now, if you don't have a lot of acne on your nose, you may notice if you still squeeze the side of your nose, you're gonna get oil that comes out. That is not a blackhead. That's just normal oil and normal sebaceous filaments that come out. And what you're gonna do if you start mashing on your skin all the time is lead to more inflammation and put yourself at risk for getting deeper cysts, pimples, or blackheads. And this leads us into our next question is, what is a blackhead? Well, a blackhead is still an accumulation of sebum or that oil and dead skin cells, but usually there's associated inflammation in the skin, which causes those dead skin cells to stick together more and actually plug up the surface of the pore so the oil doesn't escape normally. As the oil and dead skin cells accumulate, it's going to start to dilate that pore a little bit more. And when that larger accumulation of oil reaches the air, it oxidizes. So your normal oil starts to oxidize and when it oxidizes, it turns black or a darker color. And that is essentially a blackhead. It is a type of acne and it is associated with inflammation in the skin. Now there's not a ton of inflammation in the way that we would find a pustule that you can pop and get a bunch of pus out of, but there is inflammation in the skin as one of the primary drivers for developing a blackhead. So that's an important distinction is that blackheads are not a normal part of the skin's development or structure. They are a type of acne essentially. Now blackheads can be extracted. Again, you can use pore strips and although I don't strongly recommend them, you can use them from time to time and you're probably not gonna hurt your skin, but it shouldn't be something you're doing two to three times a week. If you have so many blackheads that you're needing to do extractions on yourself or use pore strips several times a week, you probably need to address your acne a little bit more effectively. And I have videos on the channel that will address acne regimens a little bit better. I'll put one of those 
those right up here for your viewing pleasure. And I'll have it linked down in the video description as well if you wanna check it out after this video. Now, when it comes to blackheads, you can extract them using a pore strip or a comedone extractor. You can buy comedone extractors online now. You don't have to go into a dermatologist for it, but I just caution you to be very cautious and don't press too hard because you can actually damage your skin more and increase your risk of deeper cysts and nodules and things that are just gonna be like way worse acne. Now, one of the biggest questions that I have online or from my own patients when it comes to sebaceous filaments is how do you treat them? How do you minimize their appearance? Because even though they are a normal part of the skin structure, you may not like their appearance and some people do have a little bit more prominent pores. Again, if that's you, just know that it's normal. You don't have to go out of your way to try to change your appearance. I would encourage you to just have confidence in who you are. Happiness and confidence come from within. It's not from the judgment of other people outside. If you do wanna to try to minimize the appearance of your pores or minimize the appearance of your sebaceous filaments, there's a couple of products that I strongly recommend for this. And one of those is going to be salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid and it actually gets through the oil in your skin more effectively than many other products. My favorite way to use salicylic acid is to do it with a wash or a cleanser. And there's several different companies that make them. Uh, CeraVe has a great salicylic acid cleanser, so does Cetaphil. And then I have one as well in my skincare line, which I'll link down in the video description. And just remember when you purchase anything from the links that I share, the proceeds from that help to support my mobile clinic where I don't charge people to receive dermatology care. If you're using a salicylic acid wash, the best way to use it is to wet your face first, lather up your salicylic acid or activate it in your hands, and then rub that onto your skin using just your fingertips. You don't need harsh scrubbing loofahs or other tools in order to get that salicylic acid to work. I promise your fingertips are gonna be just fine. Now, once you've lathered that up on your face, I would recommend that you let it sit for 30 to 60 seconds before you rinse it off. That's gonna give that salicylic acid a little bit more time to break up some of that surface level oil on the skin. If you prefer to use salicylic acid as a leave-on product, I would recommend getting it around the 1%. Some people do like the 2%. It does risk a little bit more irritation on the skin, so just be aware of that. But you can use it as a spot treatment or as a leave-on treatment broadly over the areas that you're prone to getting sebaceous filaments. The other product that can work really well for sebaceous filaments is going to be a retinol. Retinol or a retinoid medication helps your skin cells to mature naturally from the stem cell layer up to the top where your skin cells will shed off. And it takes about 28 to 42 days for our skin to turn over from the stem cell layer up to the time where the skin cells shed off. A retinol is gonna help that process to occur normally and naturally so that the skin cells are less likely to get plugged up on the surface, which could lead to blackheads. But it also will help to reduce the appearance of your pores and sebaceous filaments. Now, if you wanna use both a salicylic acid and a retinol in your routine, then I would recommend the salicylic acid wash and then a leave-on retinol treatment, which you use at nighttime. Another product that you can use if you have sebaceous filaments, we've already touched on it a little bit, are pore strips or pore masks where you'll put them on and peel them off. Just know these sometimes lead to irritation on the skin, so I don't recommend that you do them frequently. And a clay mask or a charcoal mask can also be a great way to remove excess oil from the skin. These products are great at absorbing excess oil and minimizing the appearance of your pores. They're not something, again, you need to do all the time, but it can be a nice weekly treatment that you do as part of your self-care routine. In just a minute, I'm gonna name some specific products that I'll link down in the video description that you can use for these, but we're now gonna to touch on blackheads and how you can treat blackheads. And surprise, because this is non-inflammatory acne, the treatments are also gonna be heavily reliant on things like salicylic acid and retinol. And the way that you wanna use those is the same way that I've talked about for using them for sebaceous filaments. You can use a cleanser that you leave on for 30 to 60 seconds. You can do a leave-on product that you wear overnight or even during the day. And again, the clay masks or charcoal masks might be a helpful addition from time to time, and you can do manual extraction, or you can see a dermatologist or an esthetician who can do those extractions for you if you're prone to getting them. And if you guys like seeing extractions, I've got a ton of them on my other YouTube channel. I'll try to link a video here as well so you can see some great extractions. So let's get down into some specific product recommendations. Again, salicylic acid in the cleansers. I really like the CeraVe Acne Control Cleanser. This is a 2% salicylic acid wash. You're gonna rub it 
it on, leave it on for 30 to 60 seconds before you rinse it off. The Glycel Cleanser from Dean Skincare, that's the line that I carry in my office, has the salicylic acid plus a little bit of glycolic acid, so you get a little extra exfoliation, which in and of itself can be helpful for both blackheads and for sebaceous filaments. If you're purchasing products off my website, use the code YouTube and you'll always get at least 15% off. And for those that are really budget conscious, I also will recommend the SA Cleanser from Cetaphil. This is another great option for salicylic acid based cleansers. For a leave on salicylic acid product, I'm gonna make a couple of recommendations here. The first one is the CeraVe Acne Control Gel. This is a 2% salicylic acid, really great leave on treatment. And the second one that I'll recommend is the Blemish Defense Treatment Serum from Dean Skincare. That is the line that I carry in my office. And this is very popular, especially with my middle-aged women who still battle a little bit of acne. Both of these products can be used all over or as a spot treatment. When it comes to retinol, retinol is a great option for these blackheads or the sebaceous filaments and one of the easiest ones to obtain over the counter is actually going to be different gel this is adapalene this used to be prescription only and it went over the counter a few years ago this is a 0.1 percent adapalene it's a true retinol and it's going to be one of the most effective ways to treat blackheads whiteheads sebaceous filaments and even mild inflammatory acne when you're using a retinol, I highly recommend that you wash your face at night, make sure that it's totally dry before you put it on, take a pea-sized amount on the tip of your finger, dot your forehead, chin, cheeks, and nose, and then rub that in. It's often a good idea to use a moisturizer after a retinol to help prevent any excess irritation. If you wanna get a little more bougie when it comes to your retinol, the Alpha Ret Overnight Cream from Skin Better Science is my personal favorite. It is equivalent to a 0.025% tretinoin, which is available by prescription, but it has the addition of lactic acid and 10% glycolic acid to give you a little bit more exfoliation. Even though that sounds like a lot of ingredients, this is the most gentle retinol that I've ever used on my skin. I love the results. I've been using it consistently for about a year and I highly recommend it. Now, if you see the price on this, you're probably gonna balk at it a little bit because it's like $140, but just know that that one bottle will last you about five months. There's 150 metered pumps in the bottle, so it will last a long time for a very cosmetically elegant retinol that doesn't leave you prone to irritation the way that many other over-the-counter retinols do. Now, when it comes to treating sebaceous filaments or blackheads, if you're not getting the results you want, I highly recommend that you see a board certified dermatologist to consider if any other prescription retinols or in office treatments would be beneficial for you in your specific routine. When patients come to me in my clinic, my goal is always to help give them the confidence in their appearance that they want and will work with them to help make sure that they're getting the right regimen for their skin type to get them and deliver the results that they're looking for. Remember that your appearance does not define who you are in your self-worth as an individual. So if you're battling sebaceous filaments, blackheads, or even more severe types of acne, your happiness and your beauty come from within and you can still be confident as you go out in the world. And if you want to treat these things and try to improve their appearance, you can do that, but it doesn't affect who you are as a person. I just want you guys to remember that as we wrap up the video. Links down in the video description for any of the products that we talked about today. I really appreciate your time and your support of the channel because it helps me do what I love to go out and provide free dermatology care. And I'll have a couple of videos here at the end for you guys to check out if you want to see what I do in the mobile clinic or get a full acne routine. I'll see you guys on the next video.